Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the theoretical yield for a chemical reaction by a um, balanced chemical equation. So, we're looking at the reaction of propane. Of propane, which happens to be what we call a hydrocarbon because it's uh, composed entirely of carbon and hydrogen. So we're looking at the reaction of propane with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And this is an unbalanced chemical equation. Now, theoretical yield is a fancy term for um, cal calculating the total mass of a particular product that's produced during a chemical reaction utilizing a balanced chemical equation. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to calculate the theoretical yield of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to put a question mark here to indicate that. When 10 grams of propane reacts with oxygen to produce these two products. Now, as I said earlier, this is an unbalanced equation. And one of the things about chemical reactions in nature is that there is a law called the law of conservation of mass and what that dictates is that all chemical reactions happen in certain proportions and so we need to figure out what proportions that the propane is going to react with the oxygen and what proportions the CO2 and the H2O um, are going to be produced so we need to balance this equation Balancing equations can be kind of tricky and what the student needs to remember about this is that um, this is really no different than any kind of other pro any any kind of other process that we have in life like if we wanted to make a cake today we would have to combine a certain proportion of milk and um, flour in order to bake the cake and if the proportion of milk and flour isn't right then the cake that we get is not going to be very good. So we have to figure out for this equation how it's going to balance. Now propane, like I said earlier, is a hydrocarbon and that means that it's composed of only carbon and hydrogen. When you see a, a chemical reaction that involves a hydrocarbon combusting with oxygen or reacting with oxygen, it's easiest to balance an equation like this if you start with the products and then work backwards. So if we inspect CO2, what we notice is that there's only one carbon versus the propane, which has three of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a three in front of the CO2. Then we're going to look at the water because the water contains hydrogen and only the propane in terms of the reactants has hydrogen in it. And we see that there is eight hydrogens as a reactant. So what we're going to do is put a four in front of the H2O. So now we have three carbons and and a total of eight hydrogens in the products which matches what we have in the reactants. That leaves us just the oxygen to deal with. So coming back over to the products we see that from the CO2 there's a total of six oxygens and from the water there's a total of four for a total of ten. So we're gonna need a five in front of the oxygen and now our chemical equation is balanced so what this says in English is that it's gonna take one mole of C3H8 in a reaction with five moles of oxygen to produce three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O notice for each of the coefficients I use the term mole and this is because the coefficients have units of moles. So that means when we look at our input here, and what I mean by that is that we're going to react 10 grams of propane with oxygen. One of the first steps will be to change the grams into moles. Now, before we delve into that, what I want to point out about a problem like this is that there's going to be a total of um, three steps. In the first step, we're going to have a mass uh, to mole calculation. 
because we need to get the mass units into the same units as the coefficients of the balanced equation. Same, same units as the 1, the 5, the 3, and the 4. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to use a ratio from the balanced equation. And the third step will involve taking the moles of CO2 that we calculate and converting that back to mass. Now, we're going to use unit multiplier method to solve this problem. And so I'm going to take and I'm going to pull down the information we were given. So in other words, I'm going to rewrite my 10 grams of my propane. Now, in the first step, we're going to need to convert this into moles. And to do that, we're going to need the molar mass of propane. All right, molar mass is determined by taking the atomic masses of the, of the elements that make up the compound, compensating each of them for the numbers of times that they appear, and then summing the values together to get the total molar mass of the compound. So this is what this is going to look like. We come down here, we see that carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01. So there are three carbons. Each is worth 12.01 grams per mole. And we have eight hydrogens. Each of those is worth 1.008 grams per mole for a grand total of 44.094. Um, and that's units of grams per mole. Now I sort of just ju dumped, uh, jumped right into this. Um, it would be useful as you go through this with me to have a calculator along with the periodic table if you have trouble reading the one that I'm using um, which is displayed at the bottom of the video. Alright, so now let's, let's go back down to the unit multiplier method. We're going to need a multiplication sign and then a fraction bar. And this value, the 10 grams of the propane, is over 1. So now we need to utilize this number, this 44.094 grams per mole, in such a way that the units are going to cancel. So in the numerator or the top of the fraction, we're going to place our point, or excuse me, we're going to place our 1 mole. And in the bottom of the fraction, we're going to have our 44.094 grams. Now, as we go through and do the calculations, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show only four decimal places and I'm just going to drop numbers. I'm not going to do any rounding at all because the main point of this video is to teach you how to do this and I really don't at this point want things like rounding and significant figures to enter into this uh, discussion. So we're, this is how we're going to do the, the, um, do the calculations. So what I need you to do on your calculator now is divide 10 by 44.094. And what you should get is going to be 0 0.2267, and that's moles propane. So I write the units, and I make sure to use my label. And like I said, I just drop all the numbers after the 7 because I'm not concerned about them. Coming back over to the initial calculation, you can see that the grams cancel nicely. And it's going to be 10 divided by 44.094 to give us 0.2267 moles of the propane. So now we're into step number two here. And what we want to do at this point is use the ratio that relates the CO2 that's produced to the propane that was used in the reaction. So for every mole of propane that's put into the reaction with the oxygen, we're producing three moles of CO2. Notice back here at the beginning, we didn't state anything specific about the oxygen. And we did make an assumption here. And that assumption was that the oxygen is in excess. And all I mean by that is that in this problem, we're assuming that we have all the oxygen necessary or present to react with the 10 grams of the propane that we started the reaction with. So coming back to the mid part of the problem, we now have our propane in the same units as the coefficients of the balanced equation. So now what I'm going to do is use a ratio 
using, utilizing the coefficients to solve for the CO2. So this is over 1. And what we're going to do is put what we're solving for in the numerator. We have three CO2s. And we're going to put what we want canceled in the, in the denominator or the bottom of the fraction, which is 1, C3, H8, the propane. And you can see here nicely the C3H8 cancels with moles of C3H8. And we've actually solved for the CO2. And the moles of CO2 that we're going to produce is 0 0.6803. And again, all I'm doing is dropping the numbers after the 3. I, I, don't, I literally don't care about them. More importantly, what you should have now is, or realize, is that we have successfully calculated the moles of carbon dioxide. So we're into step three, and what we need to do here now to find the theoretical yield, which is nothing more than the total mass of CO2 produced, assuming that this reaction goes to completion or that we react all 10 grams completely is convert our moles of CO2 into mass. So I'm going to pull that value down so we have more room. So it's going to be 0 0.6803 moles CO2. Unimultiplier method, so we have a, a multiplication sign and a fraction bar. And now we need the molar mass of CO2. So again, we look at our periodic table and we see the atomic mass for carbon and the atomic mass for oxygen. So there's only one carbon in CO2, so we'll have 12.01 plus. There are two oxygens, and each oxygen is worth 16.00 for a grand total of 44.01. So in this case, and it's grams per mole, so in this case, we're going to need grams in the top, and we're going to need moles in the bottom. So we're going to put our 44.01 up here in the top. And we'll, this, this number here is over 1. So it's 0 0.6803 times 44.01 grams, which is about 29.9 grams of CO2 produced in the reaction. All right, so to reiterate, Theoretical yield problems consist of basically three steps, usually three steps. Usually the reactant that you're interested in is going to be given to you in mass. You stipulate the other reactants as being in excess. And step one is almost always a mass to mole calculation to find the moles of the reactant. Then you use a ratio from the balanced equation in order to solve for the product that you're interested in. The last step is converting the moles of that product into mass of that product. All right, this concludes our initial video on theoretical yield.